Good afternoon. On behalf of the University of Utah Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, administration, and students, welcome. Welcome to our many guests who are joining us this afternoon from the higher education community, the state of Utah, and the First Presidency, and other authorities of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Today, we celebrate this historic occasion the inauguration of Ruth B. Watkins as the 16th president of the University of Utah. <laughs> While this event will officially install Dr. Watkins as president, please rest assured she has been hard at work since April, setting up her administration and outlining her vision for this institution's future. President Watkins has traversed the campus and state to listen and learn from the constituents who will help move the University of Utah forward in the years ahead. Ruth is an energetic, passionate, and compelling advocate for education, focused on ensuring the you builds on its legacy of delivering outstanding value in higher education and health care. She is committed to the success of our students and faculty, recognizing that their success also means success for our state and its prosperity. Dr. Watkins served you superbly in her capacity as Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs. She brings that experience along with more than 20 years in faculty and leadership roles at the University of Illinois. She is dedicated to... <laughs> she is dedicated to continuing the momentum of our state's flagship university and achieving greater recognition for the University of Utah across the country and around the world. Many of you have played key roles in shaping the U into, its fine, into the fine institution it is today. You love this university and want to continue to achieve ever greater accomplishments. I want you to know that Ruth is a leader who can and will live up to the task of guiding the U to new heights. Now I would like to recognize and extend a warm welcome to Bob Young, Ruth's spouse and partner in this new adventure. Thank you, Bob, for the role you play in supporting both Ruth and the U. I would like to also recognize President Emeritus David Pershing and Dr. Sandy Pershing and express appreciation for their service and great friendship. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I am pleased to welcome the many friends of the U who are here today. Thank you for joining us in celebration of our new president. Thanks for your attendance and <clears throat> thank you for what you do for the University of Utah. Good afternoon. My name is Shiva Mozafari and I'm a junior from Boise, Idaho. I'm a student in the Honors College and I created my own major called Integrative Health Sciences. And my name is Devon Gethers. I'm a junior from Pleasant Grove, Utah and I came to the University of Utah as a transfer student to study at the David Eccles School of Business. It is our pleasure to introduce the 10th president of the University of Utah and president emeritus of the University of California, David P. Gardner. Thank you very much. I'm not usually introduced by students. Ordinarily, I'm being demonstrated against. <laughs> well, distinguished guests, President-elect Watkins, it is my distinct honor in behalf of the national higher education community to convey to President-elect Watkins the congratulations and warmest good wishes of your colleagues from throughout the country. You will find such colleagues to be invaluable sources of information knowledge and support 
do not hesitate to call upon this community. This is its 16th occasion since 1850 that the University of Utah has inaugurated a new president. We are fortunate to be here today, not only in the historical sense, but especially so as this occasion marks the investiture of the university's first woman president, the preceding presidents all having been men. But the passage of time going forward will take little account of President-elect Watkins' gender, but will focus almost entirely on her accomplishments and contributions to the further upbuilding of the University of Utah's academic distinction in all of its aspects. I wish today, however, to call out a less known aspect of her upcoming work that will not be as visible as will be her work here in Utah. By this I mean as president of one of the nation's most admired public universities. President-elect Watkins' views and opinions on issues concerning higher education in the United States will be both sought and heard. They will count not just with her peers, but also in her conversations with members of Congress, when testifying at congressional hearings, when visiting government officials, such as the Secretary of the United States Department of Education, and other cabinet-level officials. She will be expected to contribute to the work of the American Council on Education, American Association of University Presidents, and other like national organizations. She will be working with Utah's congressional delegation, regardless of party, and occasionally with the incumbent president of the United States, should her national assignments warrant. Having worked uh, personally with four United States presidents, Ford, Reagan, Bush, and Clinton, I can assure Ruth, that that experience will be more than merely memorable. <laughs> she will also be engaged in matters international with the relevant higher education organizations of which she will be a member, and universities abroad, servicing agreements among and between them and the University of Utah. I think I'd better stop now or President-elect Watkins, upon reflection, may refuse to be inaugurated today. <laughs> in any event, we are lucky in Utah to have such an experienced and demonstrably capable person heading the University of Utah. Ruth, good luck to you. We are all cheering for your success. My name is Michelle No. I am from Salt Lake City, and in my fourth year as a pre-med student, majoring in biology with minors in chemistry and pediatric clinical research. Hello, I am Benjamin Battistone, also from Salt Lake City. I'm in my second year in the Honors College, and I'm studying philosophy and pre-med. We are pleased to introduce three important partners and friends of the university. Lieutenant Governor Spencer Cox, Commissioner David Bueller, and Salt Lake Community College President Denise Huftelin. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to be here with you today on this very special occasion. I learned very quickly that one of the roles of Lieutenant Governor is to disappoint people. And uh, I apologize, President, that Governor Herbert could not be here today. Uh, you are with the, uh, the number two. I assure you, he wishes he could be here. He is on a flight coming back. He just met with the President of Taiwan and he wishes he could be here. He sends his regards. But I am the lucky one that gets to be here to honor President Watkins on this, her inauguration. There are so many reasons that we are excited to have President Watkins here in this role at this time. Not the least of which is that she actually planned an inauguration that is going to be done in an hour, which seems almost impossible. <laughs> and it will only be possible if the politician speaks for less than two minutes, which I know you think is not going to happen, but I assure you it will. The other reasons 
that I am excited, so excited to have to have President Watkins here, and this is important. Um, you should know that this does mark now fully half of the presidents of the universities of higher education in the state of Utah are women. And, and, I've been told that applause does not count towards my two minutes. And it is also important to note that not, not only are half of them female, 70% of the actual students in the state will now be under the direction of female presidents. Congratulations on helping make that happen for the Rockets. And yet, and yet, that is not why I'm most excited to have President Watkins as president of the, the, our flagship institution. If you look at, at her background, if you look at her resume, it is second to none. There is no one more qualified to assume the role of president of the University of Utah, the flagship university of our state, than President Watkins. And yet, that is not why I'm most excited to have <laughs> President Watkins as our president. If you have watched her over this past summer as she prepared to take the reins of this university, I saw something I, I did not expect to see. I saw her traveling to every corner of our state. I saw her reaching out to people who have never heard from, from the University of Utah, although they've heard of the University of Utah. And she went about listening. Humbly, she went to learn. She went to understand. She went to try to find insight into the lives of those who are struggling right now, those who feel lost, those who feel disaffected, and those who, those who feel unrepresented. And she was there to listen, and she was there to learn. There is no question, as President Gardner just mentioned, that the University of Utah is a world-class institution and will and has for years affected the course of human history in the world, and it will continue to do that. You know, the reason I am most excited to have President Watkins here is that she is going to make sure that this isn't just the University of Utah, but it's the University for Utah. Congratulations, President. President Watkins is the eighth president appointed by the Board of Regents <clears throat> so far during my service as commissioner. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the board's search for the next president of the University of Utah last year, several strong candidates were in the running. Throughout the process, Dr. Watkins excelled beyond compare, and she became an exceptionally clear choice as the next president of the University of Utah. Now, presidential searches always cause me to reflect on the qualities that are most important for a successful president. It's a long list. Recently, however, I read a very good article written by three higher education experts that succinctly listed the qualities necessary in a university president. First, flexibility. A president must be nimble intellectually and politically to, and able to adapt to changing priorities. A flexible president also knows when to break up silos and how to avoid being caught in the rigidity of we've always done it this way. Second, sustainability. Successful presidents have a solid strategic plan that details their university's short-term and long-term goals. This includes paying particular attention to multiple revenue streams. Finally, effective communication. This includes learning how to read people effectively and paying attention to relationships. Nothing is more vital for a successful president. Now, as I've described these three qualities, I'll bet you've had the same thought I had. They may as well have included President Watkins' photo in the article because she embodies each of these attributes and the university will excel under her leadership. President Watkins, on behalf of your colleagues in the Utah System of Higher Education, congratulations. We look forward to continuing to see your successful leadership in action and the great things you will do for Utah's flagship university. On behalf of the Utah System of Higher Education Council of Presidents, it is my distinct honor to share our best wishes for President Watkins in her new role as president. In just a few short months of her tenure with the Council of Presidents, President Watkins has already emerged as a leader, a steady, thoughtful contributor with a sharp eye for places to improve. Her collaborative spirit, immense intellect, sense of humor, and remarkable regard for the students of Utah promises to shape many new initiatives and policy discussions moving forward. 
and her leadership skills and extensive experience bring an amazing opportunity for the state of Utah and our higher education system. As the president of the flagship institution in the state, you play an essential role in balancing the immense and essential research and knowledge production of your faculty with the ever-increasing need to strengthen the undergraduate experience and student completion. President Watkins, your fellow presidents stand ready to work alongside you to improve the college going and completion rates across the state. We stand ready to close the achievement gaps of underrepresented students. We stand ready to address high growth and changing demographics, and we stand ready to consider and adopt new ways of learning to meet societal and workforce needs. We are united in our care and passion for students and learning and the transformative power of education. As Paul Hanstead asserts in his book, Creating Wicked Students, our world faces complicated problems with the natural environment, the political climate, education, poverty, and technology. We need educated citizens who have a sense of the world around them and of their ability to interact with that world in meaningful ways. The parameters are changing. The tools and technologies are changing. We live in a wicked world, an unpredictable world, and we need graduates, wicked graduates with wicked competencies. The Council of Presidents looks forward to collaborating in innovative ways to send more students into our world to solve our wicked problems. We will benefit from the strong voice you bring to the table, a voice grounded in thoughtfulness, intelligence, and an understanding of higher education in the state of Utah and in the nation. And I'll close with a quote from President Cockett referring to Ruth's ambition and drive. I'll need to put on my running shoes to keep up with President Watkins. <laughs> from all of us on the Council of Presidents, congratulations. Hello, my name is Madeline Mama. I am originally from Guinea, West Africa. This is my junior year at the U, and I'm studying business and theater. And I'm Mitchell Kenny, a junior from Sandy, Utah. I will graduate in 2020 with a degree in finance from the David Echo School of Business. It is now our pleasure to introduce the next segment of the program. A video compilation of greetings from members of the campus community. President Watkins has made students a priority in her administration by truly making sure that our education will prepare us to be the leaders of the future. From touring throughout the state of Utah to encouraging more interdisciplinary collaboration on campus, she is making sure that we're prepared for industry changes that happen in 10 years or in 20 years. She's preparing us and helping to make sure that everyone is preparing us to be graduates of the University for Utah where we're capable of accomplishing anything that the state of Utah needs us to accomplish. I'm very excited to have the opportunity to congratulate and celebrate President Ruth Watkins on the occasion of her inauguration. She's brought together some incredible, interesting minds that I'm excited to work with. And I'm really excited that she's interested in expanding and growing the university. She's bringing us into the future and building as she grows. Her experience, her warmth, her grace, whether it's a challenge, whether it's an opportunity, she drives forward and I'm glad to be on this journey. I'm delighted to represent the more than 3,000 faculty members at the U who are discovering new knowledge, sharing it with their students in the classroom, and serving the state of Utah. We greatly appreciate the support of President Watkins as we reimagine the university for the next century. Well, the University of Utah Alumni Association represents over 260,000 alumni here in this country and around the world. And we're very excited that President Watkins is here to help us engage each and every one of them as friends and family of this university. The Alumni Association shares our enthusiasm and optimism as President Watkins leads our university in a new direction for all alums, not only locally, nationally, but internationally. As a faculty, we celebrate President Watkins' success and we deeply appreciate her energetic commitment to the university's educational mission. She knows that every student who comes to the U brings a unique constellation of gifts and that our task as educators is to help all students to recognize and build up the strengths that they intrinsically have. And we are just deeply grateful uh, in this respect for President Watkins' 
vision and her leadership. In this unsettled social and political climate, we need President Watkins' leadership now more than ever in order to be able to fulfill the critical missions of the University of Utah. I look forward especially to working with her as we work toward her vision of uniting the University of Utah as one campus. President Watkins makes it known to staff that our voices are heard and that our influence matters. We're so excited to have her as our next president. President Watkins, during new student orientation this past August, you said you were all in. On behalf of the student body, we are all in too. President Watkins, on behalf of the faculty, we're all in. President Watkins, on behalf of the staff, we are all in. President Watkins, the faculty wishes you all the best in this extraordinary moment, an unprecedented moment in the history of the University of Utah. We want you to know we are all in. President Watkins, we are all in. President Watkins, you're the right leader for us at the right time. The faculty is all in. Good afternoon. I am Andre Cruz Legadillo, a senior from Salt Lake City, pursuing a degree in medical laboratory science. My name is Lynette Randall, a senior honors college student from Clearfield, Utah, studying social work and pediatric clinical research. We now have the pleasure to introduce the chair of the Utah Board of Regents, Mr. Harris Simmons. President Watkins, over the five years since you arrived at the University of Utah, you've made a very positive difference. It feels to all of us like you've come home. You've earned the respect and appreciation of countless students, faculty, alumni, and citizens of the state of Utah. We look forward with great anticipation to the many ways you'll continue to shape and burnish this great institution. The University of Utah is truly a pioneer enterprise, the first state chartered university in the American West. It has a great heritage of pioneering and breaking new trails in technology, in the sciences, in the medicine, in the arts and humanities, in the social sciences, and in law and in business. We live in an age of spectacular change. Great universities such as the University of Utah are critically important, not only for fostering innovation, but for helping society to adapt to innovation. My hope for you and the thousands of colleagues you will now lead at the University of Utah is that you will continue to pioneer that you'll find ways to lift and to heal and to improve the lives of people not only in Utah but throughout the world. And that you'll challenge and nourish the minds and souls of students. That you'll fuel their ambitions to make a positive difference in the world. President Watkins, it is now my responsibility and privilege to deliver to you a formal charge on behalf of the Utah Board of Regents. President Watkins, I draw your attention to, your, to four areas of focus as you define your agenda, set priorities, and meet the challenges ahead. First, provide students with an excellent and affordable educational experience. Students at the University of Utah find opportunities to equip, to equip them to compete and excel in our rapidly changing world. This great institution has a critical mission at the graduate level and in professional programs. At the same time, it is also important that you focus on enhancing the undergraduate experience, culminating with students completing their degrees. In your previous role as Senior Vice President and Provost, you focused the entire university like never before on using data to improve student outcomes. Great progress has been made. This work must continue and even accelerate. Your own success will, in the end, be a reflection of the success of the University of Utah's students. Second, cultivate the research mission by building on a strong foundation of innovation and discovery. The University of Utah is the state's premier research institution and among the top 50 such institutions in the United States. As a research intensive institution, you and your colleagues have the responsibility to do more than disseminate knowledge. You must also discover new knowledge through rig rigorous scholarship. Encourage faculty and students to collaboratively discover, create, and innovate. This university is also a national leader in bringing innovative research to market, which is critical to our state's economic success. Third, foster the health sciences mission 
through innovative compassionate health care your careful attention and leadership along with your talented team are required for continued success and financial viability of the university's essential and far-reaching far-reaching health care mission fourth demonstrate leadership of higher education for the state of utah as president of the university of utah you lead an institution with a proud legacy and a special responsibility as the flagship institution of the utah system of higher education we have confidence that working with the commissioner of higher education you'll be a leader among all the utah system of higher education presidents and will foster the kind of teamwork cooperation and excellence that will strengthen not only the University of Utah, but our entire edu higher education system. Your collaborative approach and willingness to listen as you have traveled throughout the state has created a strong foundation to build upon. President Watkins, you set the tone and standard for this great institution. As a leader of strong character, integrity, intellect, ability, experience, and optimism, you had our full confidence and support as you build upon the University of Utah's legacy of success. President Ruth Watkins, if you'd please join me at the lectern.
I am Celia Patricia Solis, a doctoral candidate in the College of Education from Brownsville, Texas. I have the privilege of serving in the Presidential Search Committee representing the University of Utah graduate students. My name is Skylar Deason. I am from West Jordan, Utah, and completed a degree in chemistry this past spring. We are honored and proud to introduce our 16th president, Dr. Ruth V. Watkins. big believer in humility, and I have to tell you, this could go to your head just a little bit today. <laughs> so I'm going to count on all of you not to let that happen. Today, I officially take responsibility for an institution that has been loved and well cared for since its inception. Each of the 15 presidents who preceded me lifted this university to new heights. I'd like to particularly acknowledge that those who are with us today who have supported me generously throughout my time here, former President David Gardner, former President David Pershing, and former interim President Jerry McIntyre. Please join me in thanking them. It's such a tribute to my predecessor's vision and leadership that I take over a university that has never been stronger. And yet there is so much more that we can do. I'm confident that we can work together to achieve even greater heights in our quest to make this one of the truly great public universities in this country, even as we fulfill the hopes, dreams, and needs of the people in this great state. Our aim, to advance our stature as the University of Utah, while increasing our impact as the University for Utah. I must confess that on this occasion, and many others in the past few months, I've asked myself, why me? How did it come to be that I have the honor of leading this great university? Many people, many of you here today, helped me along the way, unselfish in your guidance and your support, generous in your commitment to the university and to me personally, I thank each one of you. But I know that the sequence of events that led to this humbling and wonderful opportunity for me were set in motion much longer ago with my parents and their experience with the life <laughs> impact that education can have. My father was born in 1932 in very difficult circumstances. My dad's mom died when he was born. His father lost a business and left his family. My father was fortunate to be raised by loving grandparents, very hardworking people during the challenging time in America, a time of severe economic hardship. From that very difficult start, my dad, who always said he wasn't as smart as his peers, but instead got through by working very hard, ultimately made his way through a doctor of veterinary medicine, and he did so without accumulating any debt. Here he is in his 1961 graduation photo, taken a few months before I was born. Now he's superimposed over some dairy cows. And you might ask, why the dairy cows? So he would say, if he were here, yes, he did spend a lot of time with them, but he spent a lot more time looking at the other end of the cow rather than their smiling face. I would tell you that his accomplishments were quite remarkable. How were they possible? I think that there were two very significant life-changing influences for my father. One of them, the GI Bill. The other one, the wisdom to marry my mother, a wonderful woman <laughs> and also a second grade teacher. The fact that I was born to college-educated parents has no doubt been a significant determinant of the opportunities that I have had. The GI Bill, signed by Franklin D. Roosevelt in 1944, was a life changer, provided access to higher education for millions of Americans who were the first in their families to attend and finish college, including my dad. I am the second generation beneficiary of that visionary American innovation. So today, our question is, what are we doing now that will make a college education possible and meaningful for coming generations of students? What do we owe those who are coming of age today in America? 
i believe that we have a duty to transform education for the twenty first century in the same way that the g i bill before it and the moral act of six eight hundred sixty two which established land grant universities across our nation made education possible for millions of americans allowing them to achieve the american dream as we at the university of utah focus on this obligation we may remain grounded in the values and the principles upon which the, this university was founded in 1850, just three years after they arrived in the Salt Lake Valley, our founders created a modest institution of higher education <laughs> to ensure a prosperous and fulfilling future for the people of Utah. From that humble beginning, through a major research university with global stature, over decades of growth and change, the university has maintained its commitment to inquiry, innovation, and public service. Inherent in the youth values is a legacy of community, of joining together for the common good. With that common good in mind, we are thinking about our duty to meet the needs of 21st century students, much as the GI Bill did for those before us, people like my own father. One strategy now in the works here at the U is an innovative income share program that will use donor investments and institutional funds to help those thousands of students cross the finish line to their degree in a timely manner, getting them into the workforce or onto their next step more quickly and earning increased wages. Our vision, a self-perpetuating fund that, that students who graduate will contribute to, ensuring the success of those who follow and those who follow them and the next round of students and so on. This innovative idea designed by the U for U students is made possible by creative and generous investors who are working with us to fund this transformative Invest in U program, allowing our students to pay today's tuition with tomorrow's earnings. I believe now is the time to build on our country's proud history of providing access to higher education for individuals from all economic backgrounds with innovations that meet 21st century needs. This is the goal of our income share program. And this is the University for Utah in action. This kind of innovation is one of the reasons the U is uniquely positioned to lead as a model public institution in the 21st century. And there are many others. We're delivering value in higher education and in healthcare through an ideal combination of quality and cost. So what is value in healthcare, in higher education? It is not just what you pay, that's cost. Value is what you get for what you pay, the intersection of cost and quality. Now, as it turns out, Utah owns value in both healthcare and in higher education. Let me, yes. <laughs> Let me show you what I mean. So we can compare education and healthcare on an axis of most affordable versus least affordable. We can also add a dimension of quality, best outcome, worst outcome. Now let's look at a few states and we'll see some patterns. And then we can see where Utah is. This is healthcare, cost and quality. Utah is in the most affordable and best outcome section in terms of healthcare. Now let's look at higher education. This is cost and quality for higher education. Again, you can see several states, and now you can see Utah. This is impressive. Utah is in the sweet spot of value. We are proud of what the U has accomplished in delivering value in medicine and in higher education, and we are working to increase value. This is important for Utah and for the nation as the value of higher education is called into question and healthcare spirals beyond affordability. This is the university for Utah in action. Thanks to the pathbreaking work of our team in health sciences, the U is now known nationally for the exceptional patient experience. Our patient care is consistently ranked in the top 10 nationally. We're
extending the roadmap developed in our academic medical setting to create and ensure the exceptional educational experience the youth student population with its broad interests and broad needs brings remarkable diversity and talent to the institution one example this year's commencement speaker hoden abdi hoden and her family fled somalia during its civil war and emigrated to the u.s from an ethiopian refugee camp hoden had a limited formal education which might have been an obstacle to future success but not for hoden hoden's first interaction with the u was as a custodian this sparked her determination to get an education and with the encouragement and help of our staff and faculty she did hoden graduated from the u last spring after completing a degree in chemistry hoden is now beginning medical school at the university of minnesota we celebrate Hoden's achievements and we cherish our ability to provide an exceptional experience for all of our students. Our future leaders, like Hoden, as well as the thousands of students from Lehigh to Logan, Price to Parowan, Moab to Mount Prospect, Farmington to Fairview, all of these students looking to the U for a life-changing experience. Our aim is simple. Every student who comes to the U will have an exceptional educational experience and they will complete their degrees. This is the University for Utah in action. The U's value comes not only in our commitment to our students and our patients, but from our commitment to innovation and discovery. We have proudly moved to the top tier of public universities in the country, attracting world-class faculty who engage in groundbreaking research and draw inquisitive, smart, creative students who are the change makers, innovators, and leaders of our future. Our researchers are recognized with the highest awards in the country. Christopher Haken and the Breakthrough Prize for Mathematics, prestigious National Academy memberships, Guggenheim Awards. More importantly, they are solving some of the most pressing problems of our time and improving quality of health and life in Utah and beyond. In part, this is happening through the collaboration and transfer of knowledge from one generation of scholars to the next. Craig Selzman's path-breaking work in cardiothoracic surgery, for example, builds on the shoulders of Russell M. Nelson, a former surgeon and faculty member, now president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The impact of our innovation and discovery is clear. The U.S. Department of Energy selected the U to develop a frontier observatory for research in geothermal energy, forged right here in Utah, to investigate expansion of the nation's geothermal systems. Many of you here today have supported the U in these efforts. I am deeply, deeply grateful to our partners in our community, in our city, in our state, and to our donors our political leaders, and the talented people of this institution. You truly are a team of teams in the best sense. Each of you leading in your area while joining us in a network of impact. This is the University for Utah in action. Your university truly has never been stronger. And yet we can and must do more. We have an obligation to our students, our state, and our nation to be a higher education innovator, leading the way in developing creative strategies that enable success and completion for our students, that deliver value and ensure exceptional experiences in healthcare and in higher education, and that drive the discoveries that will improve human lives. As we pursue our vision as the University for Utah, I would like to ask you to help us reach new heights to consider what you can do as a member of our university community to accelerate the momentum of the University of Utah. With your support, there is much we can do together. The stakes are high. This work matters. Staying true to the values of our founders, we can ensure a vibrant future for the people of Utah, and we can do our part to make a difference in the world. I recognize today how deeply fortunate I am to be leading this university at this moment in its history. I acknowledge that I would not be here without you. We share this success 
and we share the opportunity the responsibility is significant but the burden is lightened by you as my partners thank you so much